and have a seat. Well, good morning and welcome again to Calvary. We're so glad that you guys are here. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Robert. I'm the youth pastor here, and I get the awesome opportunity to lead our student ministry each and every week. And um, we're going to be continuing our Just Jesus series to open up to the book of Luke. Uh, Luke chapter 24 is where we're going to be at this morning. If you don't have a Bible or Bible app uh, with you, um, there's Bibles all in the pews in front of you. You can grab one of those, one of those blue hardcover Bibles, and turn to page 1,125, and you'll find Luke chapter 24 right there. Now, as you guys are, are looking for Luke chapter 24, I've been realizing that we spend a lot of time looking for things. If you're anything like me, you spend a good deal of time looking for sometimes the obvious things. And uh, my wife and I just moved this past week, and so our life consists of looking for things that we know we own but have no idea where they are. It's in a box somewhere. That's the good news. And, um, and so sometimes we just live in this state of looking for things. And sometimes it's not fun, like with moving, but sometimes we kind of make a sport out of it. And we do things like word searches and crossword puzzles or, or the occasional Where's Waldo quest, for those of you who remember Where's Waldo. And, uh, and some of you guys in here are like, ah, I don't do that. I do things like geocaching and scavenger hunts and, you know, real searches like that. But, but we spend a lot of time looking for things. And, and sometimes it's the, it's the things that are right in front of us that we spend the most time looking for. You know, it's, it's that receipt that we have to have to turn in, or it's that email we know we didn't delete but can't find, or it's the keys to our car and we're just hoping and hoping that they're not locked inside the car, or it's our child's other shoe because kids have this magical ability to lose just one shoe. And I'm guilty of this too. I, I, I'm frequently, I've torn apart the house or my office looking for my keys or my sunglasses only to have my wife come up to me and say, Robert, your sunglasses are on your head. Like, they've been there the whole time. And so sometimes we struggle to see what's right there in front of us, the things that are, are right in front of us and right with us. And as we continue in our study of the book of Luke, we're picking up um, right after Jesus' resurrection. We saw last week that God loves to surprise his people and that he surprised us with the resurrection of Christ. And we're picking up now with the story of these two guys on the same day that Jesus was resurrected. And these guys had some things they were looking for and wanting in life, and yet they had a hard time seeing when it was right there in front of them. And we're going to look at their encounter with Jesus and see what we can learn from their experience. So Luke chapter 24, we're going to start down in verse 13. And that says this, that very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still looking sad. And one of them named Cleopas answered him. Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, what things? And they said, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who is a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and soul of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. 
They said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, the Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told what had happened on the road, how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. So here we too see this event of these two men who are, are walking with Jesus. And as we look at this, this event, this passage, we see the struggle to see Jesus. We experience this struggle to see Jesus that they have. Now, they had been following Jesus. They knew his teaching. They're calling him this, this mighty prophet. And so they had known Jesus and had been following him, but they don't recognize him. They don't realize that they are literally walking with Jesus. And the, the scripture says that their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And this could mean that, that God literally kept their eyes from being able to recognize Jesus in that moment. Or it could be that they were distracted, not at the right place of mind and in their life to be able to see and recognize Jesus. And that's what I think is going on here. I think that there were some things in their life and some things on their mind that kept them from being able to understand who it was that they were walking with. And the most obvious is that they thought Jesus was dead, right? If, if someone we knew died, we would not expect to see them walking out of bashes three days later, it's just not what we would expect to see happen. And so, so there are some things in their life that kept them from seeing Jesus as they were walking with him. But, but more than that, there are some things in their life that kept them from being able to recognize how God was working, how God was at work in and through their life and in these situations. And this morning, there's some parallels for us as well. There's some things that can happen in our life that keep us from being able to see how God's at work. We may not be physically walking with Jesus on a road to a village, but as we walk through life, we encounter times where we don't see or understand how God's working and where God is in a situation. And so as we look at their struggles and their distractions, I hope that we are able to see some things that might keep us from being able to recognize Jesus and how he's working as well. And the first thing that, that was in their life is that they were focused on their plan not happening. You can kind of sense this as they're telling Jesus about the events and they're kind of recapping. And we can feel the disappointment at what they say. And it kind of culminates with a statement in verse 21 where it says, we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. And you kind of just feel that disappointment that their expectations, their plan didn't happen, didn't pan out. See, the Jewish people knew that a Messiah was coming. They knew that the Savior was coming. And their hope was that when he came, he would overthrow the Roman government in that day because they were living under this oppressive, corrupt Roman government that made their life difficult. And they were hoping that when the Messiah comes, he'll change everything. And that was their plan of redemption. But God had a different plan for redemption. See, God didn't send Jesus to earth for a political redemption, but for a spiritual redemption. And so Jesus did indeed redeem people but he redeemed us from sin and death and hell, not from a corrupt first century government. And praise God that that was his plan because his plan was so much greater and so much more permanent than what their expectations were. But they had a hard time seeing and understanding that, and so they were distracted by their expectations not being met, their plan not happening. And as they watched Jesus be condemned and crucified and died, they watched their plans, their hopes die with him. And so they saw this take place and it caused them to believe that God was not at work, that Jesus wasn't the Messiah and that everything was off. And we can, we can do the same thing in our day-to-day -day life. We can set out some plans and expectations for what we hope to see happen. And if we're not careful, we make those things the absolute and we focus on them so much that we can't see God's plan through the midst of our planning. And so as we lay out plans and expectations, we have to be willing for our plan not to happen our way. Because in the end, God has a plan that's so much greater than what we can set out, what we can establish, what we can plan for. And so we simply need to trust him and walk in faith with him, knowing that he has a better plan. So they were focused on that, but they were also blinded by their grief. 
You know, last, the last week we spent uh, the weekend celebrating the fact that Jesus died and rose again for us. We see this as good news that he died to save us, but they didn't understand that yet. They were looking at this and they just saw the death of someone they cared about, someone that they had been following, and someone that they had been putting their trust in. And so they were blinded by the grief of what they were going through in that moment. As they were walking on the road, they were processing through that grief, and it caused them to to miss the good that was happening in the midst of that. And see, grief can do that to us. Grief can can cloud our vision to the situation. It can do that literally through the form of of tears and, and a loss of vision, but also through us losing our hope and our joy because of the grief that we're experiencing. And in those moments, it can seem like God is far from us, that God does not care, that God is not working. But these men saw and experienced that even in our moments of grief, God is near and present to us. And grief isn't just the death of a loved one or someone we care about, but it's also the death of a dream or desire or hope or the death of a relationship that we cared about. So with that, we will all experience some moment of grief, some experience and event that causes pain and grief in our life. And so maybe you're going through one of those this morning. Maybe this weekend you're experiencing some moment of grief and know that if you are, God wants to journey with you through that. God is not far from you in your pain. He is there with you just like he was there with these men. So even though they were blinded by their grief, we see that God was still with them. God was still working in that. And the final thing that kept them from being able to see God at work is that they were distracted by the events. As I mentioned, they had expectations for what Jesus would do. They had expected him to do these political changes. And and so we kind of pick up from their commentary of the events that they were kind of paying close attention to these big headlines and what was happening. It said, you know, our our chief priest did this, our leaders did that, our rulers, this happened. You know, if they had CNN, they would have been streaming it, you know, every day, like walking around with their first century iPhones, like watching the headlines. Because they were focused on those events. They were focused on the news, the headlines, and these large things that were happening in their culture. But see, what happened was they put their focus in this, and they were looking for a savior in the headlines. But they didn't find him there. They said the, the savior they were looking for was in the tomb and then left the tomb three days later. And so as they looked at the headlines, they were looking for this political champion to make Israel great again. But they didn't find him there. And and today in this season, there's a lot of people looking for a savior in the wrong place. There's a lot of people pouring their hope, their energy, their devotion, their focus into uh, the events of today and what's happening. And looking for a leader who's going to change everything and create a political revolution that's going to make everything great again. But if that's where our focus is, we're not going to see God at work because he's far more concerned with changing us and working in our life than changing the headlines and the news events. So as we look at them, they were distracted by the events. This morning, are you distracted by the headlines? Are you distracted by these these news events, these headlines, and the events that are happening today? And a question to to help with that is, what's your main focus? Is it the things happening on the news in the city around us, or is it how God's working in your life and the life of people around you? Because that's where God is at work, and that's where God wants to show you how he is at work. And it's only Jesus that can really make us great again and make our life great. Now, these men's main focus was on the headlines, but thankfully, you know, they were distracted. They struggled to see God at work, but the story doesn't end there. You know, we're not left with, well, you know, they missed God. They kind of sucked the end. Because there's a process that they went through that they were able to see how God was working. They realized that Jesus was there with them, and this came through a process of focusing on Jesus. Because see, when it comes to vision, focus is everything. If we don't have focus and clarity, we're not able to see anything. And I love taking pictures, but if a picture is not in focus, it gets deleted, it gets thrown away because it's worthless. 
And many of you are wearing corrective lenses of some sort, and if they don't help you focus, they don't do their job properly. And you experience that, that moment where you get a new prescription, a new set of lenses, and you're able to see what you couldn't before. And you see what you were missing that whole time. And, and my family experienced this recently. I have, I have an older brother, and, um, and he lives at home. He has uh, special needs. And um, for pretty much all of his life, all of my life, he's worn glasses. And, and his power of his glasses has grown a lot over the last few years, so much so that the edge of his lenses caused distortion because they were so thick. And so if you weren't looking directly through his glasses, it was all like, you know, funhouse mirror type image on the edges. And, and so my parents are like, okay, this isn't working. We need another pass. So we're looking at different options and things like that. And they found out that they could get contacts for him now that were strong enough. And so, so they got some trial versions. They said, okay, we'll try it out and see how he likes them. And so they started into it. And the first few days, he started making comments about how he could see things better. And we're like, okay, it's normal. It's a new prescription. But it kind of culminated uh, a couple days after. He's in his room using this karaoke machine. He loves music, he loves singing. He's got this karaoke machine that shows the words and he can follow and sing along. And he's in there, he turns it on, and a few minutes later he comes storming out of his room, all excited, goes up to my mom and he says, Mom, I can read the words on my karaoke machine. <laughs> and for three years he's had that karaoke machine and never knew what he was missing because he couldn't see clearly. His focus was off. And spiritually, there's a connection there for us as well that these men show us. If our focus is not on Jesus, we don't know what we're missing. And if our focus is off, we're not able to see how God's at work in our life. And so these men focused on Jesus, and as they did, their lives were changed their experience and what they were living completely and drastically changed. And there's some things they learned through this in order to focus on Jesus that we can learn as well. And the first this morning is that studying the Bible reveals God's plan. I love that, you know, as Jesus is talking and walking with them, he's kind of, you know, goading them on with small talk, talking about, you know, well, what happens, what was going on? And then finally he's like, all right, guys, we need to look at the Bible because you guys have no idea what's going on here. And it says that he started with Moses and the prophets, the Old Testament, and he unpacked the meaning of scriptures and how they all pointed to him. Because all scripture points to Jesus. All scripture points to how we need to follow and worship Jesus, how he's the one that gives us purpose and meaning in life. The Old Testament points to why he's coming, why we need him in, in the history of how God's worked. And the New Testament points to what he did for us and how we should live for him and follow him. And as these men got to study the Bible with Jesus himself, they realized that God had been working throughout all of history to get to that moment. They realized that he had a plan throughout all of history that culminated in Jesus' death and resurrection there. And so if we want to be able to see God at work in our life, we need to study the Bible. Now, many of you are like, okay, you're the youth pastor. You're just saying that because you say that every week to your teenagers. Just go back downstairs, go tell your teenagers, to go read their Bible, and, and that's what you're doing. But see, the thing is, this is for all of us. Because if we want to see God, we need to know him. If we want to know God, we need to know his word. And so we need to make studying the Bible a regular rhythm in our life if we want to be able to focus on Jesus. The other thing that these men show us is that reflecting on the past brings hope. You know, these men were going through these events. They were in the midst of them. And just like us, we can struggle to see the big picture when we're right in the middle of an event or right in the middle of, uh, of some process and they couldn't understand the big picture of, of why Jesus died and what was happening because they're right in the middle of it. But as they got through it and as Jesus talked to them and they were able to reflect back on that, they were able to see the big picture of what was happening. You know, as we look to focus on Jesus, we know that hindsight is twenty twenty. We're able to see so much clearer in retrospection than we can in the moment. And as we look back, we're able to see how God was working in our life and, and the good that he brought about even when we miss it in the moment. 
So let me encourage you to take some time to reflect back on your life. Look at those events, those highlights, those good events, those good news moments, and realize that that was God working and blessing you in your life. It wasn't that, that you made some great accomplishment or achievement. It's that God chose to bless and provide for you. And in the same way, look at those low points, those moments of pain or suffering, those moments of mistake and regret, and look for how God was still at work through that how God redeemed those moments, how God redeemed your life even through your mistakes, even through those low points, because God is at work through all of our life, not just the good points. And see, as we look back and and see how God worked in our life, it, it builds our faith. It gives us a foundation of trusting Jesus more and more because we see that if, if God worked through those good points, and he was able to redeem our mistakes, then he's going to continue to work as we move forward. But the last thing they show us, and the most important thing, is that relationship changes everything. You know, these men were learning with Jesus. They were able to see some things, but it wasn't until they spent time with Jesus and started into a relationship with him that they were really changed. See, they're walking along the road, and you know, it tells us that they get to the village in the evening, and they invite Jesus to spend the evening there and eat with them. And for the first time, Jesus goes from just being a prophet, just someone they followed and learned from, to being someone that they had a relationship with. And it's that relationship that changed their lives and fully opened their eyes to see who he was. And as they started into that relationship with him, their understanding changed. Who they understood him to be changed. How they understood their life changed. How they understood the events in the past changed. See, nothing physically changed, but their understanding and perspective changed because of a relationship with Jesus. And for us, relationship with Jesus is what matters. It's what changes everything for us. So today, do you have a relationship with Jesus? Are you in a point where Jesus is just someone you know about and follow or someone who is your savior, who you are in relationship with? And if, if you don't have a relationship with him, it's, it's simple to enter into that. It's as easy as admitting that you need a savior, you need him in your life and believing that, that what we've talked about these last few weeks, that Jesus died and rose for us is real and then declaring to the world that you're a follower of him. If you'd like someone to journey with you through that this morning, you're going to have an opportunity after the service to talk to some of our pastors and leaders in this room over here, and they'd love a chance to guide you through that process. But if you're here and you're already in a relationship with him, it doesn't end there. Following God isn't just a a once and done type thing, because these men exemplify what we're to do because they went and told you know, they're there in the, in the house with Jesus, they're eating with him, and they, they're able to see and understand who Jesus was, and once Jesus leaves their presence, it says they get up that evening and go back to Jerusalem. Now, they had spent probably all day walking to this village, and the scripture tells us that it's a seven-mile walk that they spent doing, and they got up at once and went back, because when we're in a relationship with Jesus, we should want to tell everyone We should be excited about what he's doing and the good news that he brings to our life. And so who are the people that that you need to go and tell? Who are the people that that you need to invite to to come to church here to experience what you've experienced? We've got a cool opportunity coming up as we've talked about, you know, just a couple times with the new building and the chance that that brings to invite people. And if they just want to come and see the shiny new building, that's cool because they're going to have an opportunity to come and experience God. And they're going to have an opportunity to hear about the good news that he has for them. This morning we see that God's at work in our life. He's at work in our world and he wants us to see that. And, and if you're struggling to see God at work, our prayer is that you would take the steps to grow in your relationship with him, to grow in your faith and understanding of him through reading God's word through spending time with him and growing that relationship and that you would go and tell someone else this good news. Let's pray.